Good morning and welcome to worship with First Presbyterian Church via Zoom. I'm delighted to see you all here this morning. Um, it's nice to see your bright shining faces and it's good to be together. It was breezy this morning and the, the wind felt refreshing and I was grateful for it. Uh, there are some announcements in your, your newsletter and so I encourage you to check those out. Um, some of the exciting things that are happening uh, are that our um, our renovation team is meeting with our builder and our architect again for a second time this week. And I want to remind everyone that the overwhelming majority of our design work is ahead of us. Um, last spring when we finished the charrette process, we were at the 5% mark. So we have more than 90% of our work still ahead of us. And so any suggestions, questions, ideas you have, um, please go to the renovation page and, and select that suggestion box or you can just click the suggestion box from the newsletter and um, drop your idea in there and the renovation team gets all of that information to share. Our architect is Dan Rorty with the Samuels Group out of Wausau, Wisconsin and our builder is O'Shea from right here in town and um, we are excited that we feel like we have the best of both worlds in this three-way partnership um, as we design what, what the future might look like. This week, we also uh, begin our training with our capital campaign team, uh, teams, I should say, because we are sharing the work um, across a bunch of different groups. And so uh, those training opportunities are um, on the calendar. And I believe Michelle has sent you reminders. And later in this service, we're going to be uh, recognizing and thanking the folks who have already volunteered to help make those things happen. Uh, Coming up, uh, starting this afternoon and for the next few days, the Presbyterians for Earth Care are offering an online um, series of gatherings, uh, worship and workshops. And so anyone who's interested in environmental concerns, climate change, um, faith and, and creation, I invite you to check, check out that website and um, participate in any ways that might bless you. And I think that's pretty good for this week. Other than just, um, or, yes, a reminder to please put any prayer concerns in the chat window. And um, as we watch the COVID numbers um, climbing again, not going in a positive direction, uh, I encourage you, if, if you have concerns about getting vaccinated and would like to talk about that, I'm happy to. Um, I encourage you to mask, distance, wash your hands, do all the things we can do to take care of one another and keep one another safe. I invite you to take a breath. Feel the ground beneath your feet. Feel yourselves held in God's hands. And remember that all the places we gather belong to God and all God's people are welcome. It's good to be together this morning. Let us join responsively in the call to worship. We gather to worship God who loves, forgives, and meets with us individually and in community. Let us put aside those things that will get in the way of worship today. We put aside the things that will get in the way of worship today. Let us build up and develop those things that will add to our worship today. We build up and develop the things that will add to our worship today. We gather to worship God in community. Our opening prayer. God who loves us, who hears us when we are joyful, and who hears us when we despair. Hear our prayers and songs this morning. Be close to us as we worship in joy and in sorrow. Help us to be close to each other helping and supporting and reflecting the love of Christ, we pray.
the prayer of confession. Trusting in God's grace, let us offer our prayers of confession. Forgive us. For the times we are angry when we should not be. Forgive us. For the times when we take offense when none is attended. Forgive us. For the times we are unkind. Forgive, Forgive us. For the times when we are not angry, but we should be. Forgive us. When we accept things as they are, even when we know that hurts others. Amen. The assurance of pardon. We are reminded to be kind to one another, forgiving and tender-hearted, because that is how God has forgiven us. We are loved and forgiven. We are loved and forgiven and invited to be loving and forgiving and tender-hearted with one another. Because we've received those gifts, we have a sense of peace which we can share with one another. God, you speak into the void and creation takes shape. You speak and prophets have vision. You speak and disciples have food to share with crowds. You speak and we know grace and peace to share. So speak to us again that we might hear your word and have the faith to follow. Amen. Our first lesson this morning comes from Psalm 130. It's a psalm of lament. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. God, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, who could stand? But there is forgiveness in you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in God's word, I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with God there is steadfast love, and with God is great power to redeem. It is God who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Amen. And from uh, Paul's letter to Ephesus, chapter 4, verses 25 to chapter 5, 2. So then, put away falsehood. Let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin, for we are members of one another. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. And do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up their stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly for, with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you are marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us, and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I was taken this week by the contrast between these two readings. 
the psalm of lament about grief and fear and these instructions in the epistle reading about how to live not with malice and anger but with forgiveness and mercy for the sake of love. And I'm particularly aware that in the last um, eight days, um, it's been my, my honor to remember the lives of two of our members. Yesterday it was Nancy Chapin, who passed away a year ago, and last week it was Carolyn McDonough, who passed last December. And honoring the lives of these two women who lived long, full lives, in all the different ways they were distinct from one another and all the different feelings of grief and loss and redeemed memories that come for families, friends. I'm aware of the mix of that. When someone has lived a life that is long and full, there is joy mixed with the grief. It's not one or the other. It's not a choice between whether we're happy or sad, but both and. The last year and a half for us in the midst of pandemic has been a mix. There has been so much loss and fear, sorrow. We've lost friends and loved ones and jobs and income and health and security and a sense of what tomorrow might hold. And if you're anything like me, some days that's annoying and sometimes it makes me mad. And yet here we are together, a community of faith who have also discovered new ways to worship and new ways to be community and new ways to do ministry and new ways to reach out. I appreciated uh, Tim this morning reminding me to uh, remind you all about our micro pantries. And if you have something to share, food items or personal care items, you can drop some off at the, the micro pantries, either the one in our parking lot that looks like the church or the one on Fifth Street, Caddy Corner from the Governor's Mansion, as a way of sharing what we have with those around us. There is both lament and joy. There are ways that God alone can redeem our memories. That the sorrow that we have felt, the irritation, the anxieties might be redeemed. Paul in writing to Ephesus knows how much we can struggle and names it for us. Names our anger, names our wrangling, names our malice, our bitterness. If you feel called out, I invite you to consider the possibility that maybe you're just being called in. <laughs> There's no shame in feeling all those things. There's no shame in that. But this letter from Ephesians is calling us into a deeper connection. There are reasons to be angry. Be angry. But don't let the sun go down on your anger. Don't let it become malice. Don't let anger harm another person. But instead, speak truth with tenderness, with gentleness, with grace, forgiving one another. As God forgives us, And it is in that forgiveness that we find hope, that we find the days redeemed. There have definitely been days I woke up when it was still dark and watched through the window as the sky went from navy to gray to the first edges of sunlight. And sometimes that wait took longer than others and I'm guessing that you know that too. 
that you know that waiting. We wait as those who watch for the morning. The psalmist repeats that line. I didn't misread it. The line is repeated in Psalm 130. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. We long for an end to the anxiety and the loss, the limits. We long for sunrise and healing and redemption. But we wait together. And I'm not sure what happened at your house this morning, but the sun rose again. And I'm grateful to gather with you here, knowing that I don't go alone and that all the things that make us ache are less than the things that make us love. Some days it's hard to balance, and some, di some days we wake in the dark and wait for the morning. Let us be imitators of God, that we might love one another as God has loved us. Amen. We chose that song uh, because today we have the joy of announcing some of the folks who have agreed uh, to work on our capital campaign. The renovation promises to make more of our church accessible, to use for our ministry and God's purposes in the community. Um, when I first arrived here, I, I heard about the need for an elevator in this building so that we could use the facility for God's purposes. 
And uh, here we are, getting ready to, to start that process. Our theme uh, has been chosen, our new season, Building Community. And the work of the capital campaign is going to be shared across several different teams so that no one has too heavy a lift. And the folks who have offered so far to help with that, um, and I'm going to read their names, and uh, at the end, maybe we can go to gallery view and you can wave at us. On the advanced commitments team, Mike Orr and Sarah Watson. The celebration team, June Greer and Kathy Bacon. Our chairpersons, Joanne Durkee and Mayberry, Mary Beth Stevens and Harvey Stevens. Um, surprisingly, our communications committee is going to work on communication, and Michelle Hastings is our coordinator. Uh, the gratitude and ministry team is Blanca Bernasek, Becky Kemp, Troy Kemp, and Becky McHenry. Our lead gifts team, Dan Greer, Jeff Maris, and Jenny Claflin. Our prayer team uh, includes Sally Jones, David Palmatier, Margie Palmatier, and Lisa Sims, and working with students and children, Matt Berry and Ann Wharf. And also, uh, Linda Johnson has agreed to work on this and is picking her team. I'm really grateful to, that we're working with Horizon Stewardship and Craig Miller, who's going to be um, leading us through this process. And, um, and um, I'm, I'm touched. My heart is warmed by the, the number of folks who have um, pitched in and will help do a part of this larger project. Um, I mentioned that when I got here, there was interest in the elevator. Uh, it was really, really clear that we had huge agreement on the need for an elevator to make this building accessible. And um, like we may agree more on the elevator than just about anything else. So it's good to see the, the fruition of our work coming into shape. And um, so thank you all for your willingness to work on the capital campaign. And um, this month, we're getting organized. And so for the rest of the congregation, we will have information coming out to you starting in September. Thank you for being part of our new season as we build community. When we gather, we offer ourselves to God, our whole selves, our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service. You can do that financially through your bank or the website or by donating by, by text. And we trust that God blesses those gifts and multiplies them. give thanks to God together. May these gifts, offerings of kindness, and generous sharing of what we have be for the building up of all. Now we come together as we pray together the way you taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
As we continue our worship day by day, in the tasks we do and with the people we meet, let us take care to build, renew, and support, and know that God is with us. Amen.